the ZTEC PC NH58AF1, also known as the XMG Apex 15, the Origin Eon 15X, the Eurocom Night Sky ARX 15. It's made by Clevo. You may be wondering why I have two here. This one has standard thermal paste, and this one has liquid metal from ZTEC PC as a service. And we'll be comparing the temperatures between these two options in the review as well. So let's get started. The overall size of the laptop is not too bad. It's not too big and not too heavy, despite having a 3950X AMD desktop CPU. It's mostly made out of plastic, however, the LCD lid is metal and has a customizable light. For ports, we have a Kensington lock and a gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 and a micro SD. On the other side, we have a headphone jack, a microphone port, USB 2, and an exhaust grill. On the back, we have an exhaust grill, a USB Type-C, HDMI out, mini display port, the AC adapter port, and another exhaust grill. On the front, we have the power, the battery charging, the airplane mode indicator, and a hard drive activity light. The laptop has thin bezels on the left and right side, along with the top with the webcam. However, the bottom still is a pretty thick bezel, unfortunately, and it really stands out. The keyboard is very nice and each key feels really good. This is Clevo's newer design. However, the one thing I don't like about their keyboard is right here, the number pad and the arrow keys are kind of combined together. And I don't really like that. In terms of flex, there really isn't much. I'm pressing pretty hard on here and it's very sturdy, especially the palm rest. Speaking of flex, the LCD does have some flex, especially at the top but it starts to get a bit more stiffer at the bottom, and overall I wouldn't say it's that bad. The touchpad is very spacious and feels really nice. It is missing the fingerprint reader in some of the models Clevo has. There are two large buttons, and this has Windows Precision drivers, so scrolling is very smooth. The display is pretty nice with a 1080p 144Hz resolution, 315-nit brightness, a 70% Adobe RGB color space, and about 92% of the sRGB color space. The view angles are not that bad, as you can see from the video, and I can definitely say that for lightweight photo editing, this display should be fine. For gaming, it's more than enough and looks pretty good. So in terms of audio... So just like the previous Asus Tough A17 I reviewed, this laptop has the same problem. Let me show you. So the speakers are even worse on this one. Instead of being down here, they're literally all the way at the bottom of the laptop and it sounds muffled. I don't know what Clevo was thinking with this, but yeah. It would have been nicer if they were up here or even like in the front, but they're literally all the way at the bottom. So on a flat surface, it's basically reflecting against the, you know, the surface. So yeah, the sound, it can get loud, but it doesn't sound that great. It sounds kind of muffled. In terms of the webcam, this is how it looks. And honestly, it's pretty noisy. I have a really bright light up there. I'm talking pretty bright, and it's still very noisy. The microphone actually isn't that bad, though. To get to the bottom panel, you need to remove a few screws. I do also recommend removing the battery as well when working on the laptop. With the battery removed, the bottom cover just comes right off, and here we have our beefy looking heatsink right here. Now, there is a 2.5 inch drive bay right here for a SATA expansion, and there's two M.2 slots right here for further expansion. We have two RAM slots here, I'm running 3200 MHz memory right now, and then we have two fans on each side. This is the GPU, and this beefy side is the CPU, so the CPU can be removed. All right. The thing everyone wanted to see, right? Benchmarks. Look at that, 16 cores all under load. So let's take a look at the scores we get with this. So as you can see, the 3950X absolutely destroys the other computers I've reviewed in multi-core. Now, interestingly, the single core performance was actually lower than the 4800H from the Asus Tough I reviewed a couple months ago. All right, let's listen to the fans. So I'm gonna run Fire Strike, and what you're about to hear right now is the actual fan noise. This laptop gets pretty loud. Let's hear it. All right, that is probably the highest physics score I've ever recorded in Fire Strike, but this is a 16 core CPU, so that's kind of expected. 
The GPU is pretty respectable, but at the end of the day, it is a 2070, not a 2070 Super, so it does score about almost 20,000. So you're probably wondering how hot the laptop got. Well, as you can see in Cinebench and in Firestrike, the CPU is almost hitting 100, and it did hit 100 on the standard thermal paste model. On the model that has liquid metal, we did see lower temperatures, and that could be the difference between thermal throttling and not. But let's take a look at gaming to get a closer look at how temperatures are for both CPU and GPU. So the laptop has no issue playing 1080p ultra settings with most games. The reason control is really low is because I put RTX on and I put it on RTX high. So it's pretty much maxed out. Even my 2080 has trouble with this game. So that's normal, but everything else is running really well. You should be able to play basically any game at 1080p maxed out with a 2070. And thanks to the high refresh rate, games like Doom actually take advantage of the panel. Looking at temperatures, the standard model hit 98 on the CPU, which is pretty hot. And the GPU maxed at 81, which is fine. The liquid metal model did run cooler with a 77 peak on the GPU and a 95 peak on the CPU. That's still pretty hot, but this is a 16 core CPU, desktop CPU at that, on a unified heatsink in a laptop. So I definitely recommend either repasting this yourself or having your reseller do the repaste. Some, most resellers actually have the thermal paste treatment, so definitely get that. But thermals isn't as much of an issue as power is. That's why this CPU runs in eco mode. But overall, I didn't have any issues in gaming. There wasn't no frame drops or anything. Everything was actually pretty smooth despite the higher CPU temps. Looking at battery life, I was able to get a little over an hour on this laptop. Obviously, when comparing it to other laptops that have things like Nvidia Optimus, it doesn't compete but you're getting a 16 core CPU in a laptop. So you definitely wanna be plugged in for the best performance. And when you're not plugged in, expect minimal battery life. So in conclusion, is a 16 core worth it? Well, if you're gonna do things like gaming and just everyday tasks or just, you know, anything that doesn't require 16 cores, I highly recommend getting a 3800X instead because it will do a great job in basically everything. It will do a great job in gaming. And really the 16 cores for people who need all those cores and are actually gonna use them. Because as you saw, we're running around 3.23 gigahertz average with all 16 cores on load. Whereas a 3800X would boost, of course, way beyond four gigahertz. So that's something to keep in mind. GPU wise, I'd recommend the 2070 because it's soldered, it's BGA. You can upgrade the GPU. You could upgrade the CPU. However, this has a B450 chipset. So I don't know if the Zen 3 processors will be compatible with this or not. We're gonna have to wait until AMD officially announces that. So until then, you know, I do like this computer. I think it's very unique and I kind of wish Clevo installed or did the whole AM4 socket in their X170 laptop instead because that has both upgradable CPU and GPU MXM format. And be sure to subscribe because that's hopefully the next laptop I'll be reviewing. And also let me know in the comments what type of laptops or which laptops you guys would like me to review and what you guys want included or not included in the review for future reviews. But with that said, this is a very unique product. I don't know of any other computer manufacturer that even has something like this. And I really hope Clevo and keeps, you know, making these type of computers because this is very unique. So with that said, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one.